Okie dokie, it's time to do something about this. Loving the way our makerspace is coming along, but that temperature just won't do. What I've been doing is using this heater to warm up the shop. That's not ideal because it kicks a lot of fumes into the shop and uh, it's a pain to get it going. So what I got is a proper diesel heater, but not the diesel heater like that one. This diesel heater, the exhaust goes outside. All the combustion process is separate from the air that we breathe. So this is yet another product from Vivor. The same as the lathe, the same as the floor tiles in here. Uh, they just offer stuff at a pretty hard to beat price. This I ordered right from their website. I'll put the link down below. Okay, what we get is our diesel heater. Has onboard uh, reservoir five liters ish, I believe. Here's our hot air out. Room air cooler in is back here, and our inlet and our exhaust are down here. I've watched just about every video there is on these things lately, and they're a pretty cool little item. Exhaust here, inlet here, a small little inlet strainer. There is a, a a screen in this one it looks like which is good there is actually a screen in there to keep bugs and stuff from getting in so we're going to leave that together exhaust pipe inlet pipe and a muffler which we're not going to use we're going to get this out through the side of the wall yeah nothing to it this is our pump the uh, vertical facing pump, that way our air bubbles can come out. Being that there's a low pressure area, this is a piston style pump. We're always gonna get a little bit of bubbles out of it and you want them to be able to make their way out. Uh, this is pretty soft hose, but it's a short run. You wanna have good hard hose for this so that it doesn't absorb the pressure pulses at all. And uh, then you actually get full shot into the burner, which is down here under this cover is a big aluminum uh, heat exchanger and inside that is your burner. So pretty straightforward. Control panel here it does come off on this one. I don't know how much cord there is here, but I'm gonna take a look at that. Not a lot, but just enough. There's a little bit, there's a loop there. That means we can take this off and I'm gonna need to mount it on the side, I think. On low, this will run for uh, in the neighborhood of 72 hours. Uh, 34 on the next step up. The math is pretty easy. This shot is 0 0.02 milliliters per piston stroke. That is pretty easy to run the math when this is a PWM unit and it's measured in hertz. Their lowest setting is going to be about one hertz and then up from there. Three hertz being uh, kind of almost middle of the road or a little higher, about 60%. And then I think it's five and a half to go up to the high. But it's easy math. You, you know how much it's going to use because it's a positive displacement pump. It's always going to point, put out 0 0.02 milliliters no matter what. That's the outer doors. We're good to go. Now mine, I'm just doing the intake inside here. That way I'm not trying to heat extra cold air from outside, which is gonna be in the minus 20 range pretty soon. And we'll be all set. This will keep the critters from climbing in there like flies and spiders and stuff. There's a, a small um, metered orifice that the heater has to start on with the glow plug and if you get any goobers in there it's not going to be able to start so this is cheap insurance this is a power supply i got from amazon this is a 15 amp unit these things are about 20 bucks a piece right now which is uh, actually a really good deal for a decent power supply the reviews are really good from people that seem to know what they're talking about so Feral crimps onto an old AC wire. Uh, this is just one of the random cords I saved. Good and heavy duty, or heavy duty enough. And you just crimp the feral crimps on with one of these. Uh, it's good to use them. 
resist the temptation to just stuff wires in here, but crimp those on, terminate them, good to go. She's starting to roar, and it's warmer than ambient. It primed itself and just sat there and chilled out for a bit. Here we go. That's getting hot. So power supply, 12 volt. Uh, 10 amps or so with the uh, glow plug running on these and I think around 1 to 3 amps free running after that. We're cooking. Yeah, this is why we test. So I thought I could maybe get away with insulation there. This black on my finger is from the wall. These are cedar boards and it burnt them in just a few minutes. That black is charred and I could smell it. So yeah, good test. So what I'll do is I'm going to make this about, oh, twice as big. I'll do a steel plate and I'll do ceramic insulation. And now I know. That's cool. I like knowing where the line is and where not to cross. That is definitely, don't cross that line. But yeah, it works good. This is gonna be a good spot. I'm gonna stick that right there. Uh, I'm gonna stick this power supply right there so I don't spill diesel on it. And we're good to go. Okay, the pairing of the remote took forever on this thing. And in case you end up with this display, it's power and right arrow until OC1 is displayed. And then you just hit a button on here. OC1 flashed away because it is already paired and it finally works. So that took me hours of trying all of the variations of this online. It's, oh, it's power, right arrow till OC1 pops up, press a button on here, boom, done. <laughs> uh, there are so many different ways for these, but there we go. Now we can control this remotely, hopefully from the house over 433 megahertz, and we'll fire up an Arduino to control this remotely. Okay, a little bit of snow. Let's see how the diesel heater did. No issues, still on low. 10 Celsius in here, and it's below freezing outside. That's a success. Uh, on very low, that's uh, two hertz it's running at on the lowest setting. So uh, two hertz at 0.02 milliliters, uh, I think works out to, uh, I'll put the math on the screen here. Pretty good. to fueling this unit it's pretty simple you can actually see through the slots on the side what the fuel level is the top of the tank we know is just about here the tank is movable in there it just sits in there uh, enclosed by this cover now what I have is one of these uh, tank top pumps from Amazon these things keep going up in price but they are worth every penny uh, runs on four AA batteries and it has an optical pickup in the bottom so that when a tank is full, it'll automatically shut off. So this way you just hit on, you don't even have to get your hands dirty. I'm running colored diesel, or we call it farm diesel here. Uh, it's about 20 cents a liter cheaper right now. It's about $2 a liter versus 220. And you just let it fill up, fill it up to the top, none to it. Let your diesel drain back down into the pump and then you never need to get a drop on your hand. Super easy. There's several different controller styles on these. This is, I think, one of the newer ones. I kind of like it. It's one of the more stylish looking ones. Our power supply is all hooked up as you saw before. All there is to it is simply hold the on button until it transitions to on and then you can set your temperature by, by the keys. Uh, there's lots of videos out there for how to switch between temp and just mode. I just leave it on mode because we want it pretty much the highest. So set H3 all the way to the top. So H6, that's high six. That's as high as it goes. You'll see the glow plug illumination here that the glow plug is gonna be on, draws about 10 amps while the glow plug is firing and it'll slowly spool up. And once it's fully spooled up, she'll roar and away we go. Our pump is starting to click. That's actually transitioning fuel into the combustion chamber and the fan is spooling up and it'll slowly 
roar louder and louder till we hit full speed. For those that want to know the noise level, uh, I'll just hold this just above the stream of air and we'll see what kind of level we'll get. So we're at about the 70 decibel mark and you can see my voice is significantly louder than that. Uh, it's loud, but not intolerable. Okay, we're up to temperature now. Walls of the garage here are right around five Celsius, but our heater in the neighborhood of around 80 Celsius coming out of that tube, which is darn respectable. You can see the outside of the case not showing any real signs of heat because, well, the emissivity of that metal isn't great, it's shiny, but also uh, it's quite insulated. The, the guts of the heater are another two layers down, so you have your steel and then plastic. But this is what we can expect with this right bone stock with the power supply set the way it is, right about 80 C. Because I love empirical measurements, here's an anemometer. About 14.6 meters per second, airspeed coming out of there. I gotta try and keep this thing cool because it's damn hot. And the neighborhood of 15 at times. It could be just because my anemometer is getting, yeah, I think my anemometer is getting a little hot. So right around the 15 meters a second. Now I'm not going to get into the exhaust here because I don't want to be responsible for your setup, but what I did is I increased that hole size. You can see previously in the video, it's suspended in steel and aluminum. Then I use high temp exhaust tape and then aluminized tape around that. So uh, I've actually got a huge area before the wood and I've had no problems. This has been running for a couple of weeks now, all told, so all good. Well, I really hope that was helpful. Uh, it's a wonderful diesel heater. I should have put it in this shop much, much sooner. Uh, we have the makerspace fully functional now. I can fab just about anything out of here. Uh, join me for more of these videos if you like this stuff. Uh, good luck in all your electronics projects and uh, links will be down below for all the stuff you need.